image resolve, there's a lot of different ways that we can key out color. And it can get pretty complicated pretty quickly depending on which tools we end up using. A lot of the times when we go to do a lot of this compositing work, we would typically go to Fusion for this. But let's say you're an editor and you just wanna get rid of a green screen. I'm gonna go through the process of doing this all on the edit page and we're just gonna go over a couple of different settings within a keyer that I typically like to use for this kind of workflow. So with that being said, let's jump in and I'll show you the couple of different elements that I have here on screen, how I keyed them, and uh, how to use the tool, I guess. As you can see here, I have a couple of elements that I keyed in here. They're all sitting on a pretty well-lit green screen, so I'll go through the process of how I did this. All right, so let's go in and we will just remove all of them for now. Actually, I didn't want to remove the background. We'll leave that, and let's go up and grab our footage. So let's start with the Dove. Okay, and we're gonna come up here to Effects, and then we're gonna go into Open Effects, and here we can just type in Key, and we're gonna get this 3D keyer. We'll drop that onto our clip. And from here, we'll come over to the Effects, and here we have some controls. Before we jump into these controls, we first wanna to go to the on-screen controls, which are right down here. We're gonna click this little drop down and go to Open Effects Overlay. And let's close the effects for now. And from here, we currently have our eyedropper for the selects. And we can click this green. And when we click the green, we see that we have a lot of this green around the outside. And that's just mainly because if I reset this here, we take a look at this green screen, we can see that we have a vignette probably from the lens or this green screen just wasn't lit very well. So the easiest way that we can deal with this is we'll click and hold down the click and we'll just drag over all of these different problem areas that we have, right? And so if we take a look at that, where I have a pretty good key, but we can see that we have a bit of a green around the edges here. So the easiest thing to do is just come right over to our dispel and we'll turn that up and instantly it goes away. Now for this shot, it looks perfectly fine and we can keep it and run with it, right? If we play through this, we can see that all of this is colored the same way that the rest of the shot was. So if we were to come over here and rescale this, we wouldn't see any of the edges, right? So that's the first element. Now remember the color of our uh, shot here, right? We got a lot of grays and blacks here. Um, because the process that we just used won't work for the next element. Uh, so let's just jump right into the next one. Let's use the lady that we had. Okay, so here we are. We'll grab another keyer. We'll drop that on and let's go through with the same process that we just did. So I will have my open effects on there. We currently have the selector. And okay, that is a very well lit screen. So there aren't too many different uh, variations of color there. And we have our edge. So let's go back to what we were doing with this spill. And everything looks fine, right? For the most part. If we come through here though, let's go right in here and we zoom in and look in this little area right here. We see that we have this grayish brownish area. So what this dispel is actually doing is it's just desaturating that area, right? And because we were previously working on a bird that was just black and gray, it looked perfectly fine. But as you can see here, her skin has turned weird shades. So we need to fix this. So dispel probably isn't going to be the solution that we're going to want to use. So let's go into matte finesse. And in here we have two controls that I like to primarily use, the in and out ratio and the blur. So if we move this around, we can see that we're pulling that edge, right? That edge that we had keyed, we're pulling that edge a bit, but we can see that we have a little bit of a jagged edge around there. So we can bump up the blur just a little bit, something like that. And then from here, we can turn this, the spill up just a little bit and there is looking like a bit better uh, results. You typically just wanna go around and look and see how things are looking. And I feel like for this shot overall, that might just do it for us. 
So let's put her back over here where she was before. Obviously she was behind the bird, so we'll move the bird up one and grab the two and bring it down. There she is, she's in the background now. Okay, so let's go into our next one, which is the little cat. And we're gonna be doing the same exact thing. And we'll come over here and we'll go, whoops, switch this over. And we'll pick this and everything is looking fine um, until we release it. And then we notice that there's some in here and there's a little bit up in here. So what I'll do is just reset and I'll start over here and we can just go over that area. I'll come down over and we'll go between the legs there. And I feel like that might be good. And for this one, if we were to bump this up, we're still going to kind of get the same sort of deal going on here. So I'm going to do what we were just doing, where we come into here and we change this just a little bit and maybe blur just ever so slightly. We don't want to go crazy. We kind of want to use a little bit of each control so we don't go too far with one control and uh, have it be super noticeable. I think that is looking pretty good if we look through the shot. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll take our cat and we'll make our cat a little smaller. And we have one more that is going to be a little different too. And so let's go grab our robot, our dancing robot. So do the same exact thing. Add that on, come over here, we'll flip this and close. And obviously this is just all rendered, right? So the green screen is gonna be all one solid color. So if I go like that, we have the green screen. So now we have a dilemma here because this down here is actually a shadow. So there's a couple of different options that you can do, but I'll just show you the easiest one to do here. If we were to go like this and pull out that, we're obviously going to lose that shadow. And in a lot of situations, the shadow is really going to put the character in the scene. So we wouldn't want to do that. So let's just grab it like that. And then we can just take our dispel and we can bring this up. And now we're just taking the color out of that. And now if we were to position that, that's going to look pretty good there, right? So we have that as an option. Now, there's a couple of little weird things that happen with this particular shot here. If we turn this off, we can see that we have a gray line around here, right? So what we could do is we could go into the garbage mat and turn on like a rectangle and we'll invert the rectangle and make the edges go all the way out. So currently there's a rectangle here and we can just pull the rectangle in. Let's do it on the sides a little bit. Oops. Let's go back in here. If we pull in the sides a little bit. We can see that we now remove that. If we go in too far, we're going to start to you know cut off everything so we don't want all of that but we want to go in just far enough so that we don't have that edge there so that is an option there now i want to quickly show you some of the other options that we have here as well um, if we switch this over to alpha black and white this is showing the black and white of um, our shot here so this black and white is going to be what we can think of as the cutout for our original um, image. And so if it's white here and we see little speckles in there or we have something like this, we can go into this clean black and clean white and because this is the white area, we can use the clean white and clean that up a little bit, right? If we had a black area, we could use the obviously the clean black and it would clean that up a little bit for like those little, um, think of it like the noise that we would see in there. Um, obviously this was a you know, CG thing, so it was rendered out very clean, so we don't have any of that. But I just wanted to show you that those were options. There's a ton of different options in this 3D keyer. It's actually something from the Fusion page, so it has a lot of um, abilities. Uh, but I just wanted to show you some of these simple tools that we can use. Well, it's not very simple, but some of these tools that we can use on the uh, edit page to quickly key out something that we can throw a background on and you know change the order here to get 
elements in front of different elements and stuff like that. And then from here, um, yeah, then we can, you know, continue on with the rest of our project. The main reasons that we would go into fusion instead of doing things on the edit page are if we want to use tracking information and link a bunch of different elements to the same tracking information. That's something that we would typically just use in Fusion because moving that kind of information around is a lot easier. If we wanted to you know, make a meme or whatever it may be and just throw a random you know, dancing robot in our shot, you know, we can definitely do that right here on the uh, edit page. If we wanted these elements to fit in the scene a little bit better, we could then go into the color page and color each one of the elements individually because they are still individual elements um, that are just stacked on the edit page. So we could go in and, and color those uh, accordingly um, if we needed to. Now I know I didn't go over every control in the 3D keyer. I'd be sitting here for well over an hour explaining every control. I just wanted to give you the gist of how this works and how you could quickly implement it into your project if for some reason you wanted to throw in, a, let's say, a dancing robot or you just wanted to use a green screen. I feel that a lot of the controls that I went over today will get you a pretty good end result. Uh, like I was saying before, if you need to track multiple elements and do a true composite, Fusion's probably the go-to option for that. But hopefully, um, after seeing this, you at least have a pretty good idea of how these controls work, and uh, you'd be able to implement them into your project if you're just trying to do a simple key like we were uh, showcasing here. But with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you do wanna learn more about DaVinci Resolve, I have a bunch of courses on the website. I do have some free titles available there as well. If you do want more than just the free titles, I do have a bunch of transitions, other different title packs and stuff like that. You can take a look at those as well. Links in the description for all the stuff I just talked about. But with that being said, my name's JR. Thanks so much for watching. Till the next one. Have a good one, guys.